For this problem statement, we have the aluminum machine part is subjected to a moment of 75 newton meters. Determine the maximum tensile and compressive bending stresses in the part. So now in this case, you can see all the dimensions given. In, in this case, we're dealing with millimeters. And we have this bending moment that this beam is experiencing. Now the cross section of this one, of course, is a little bit more complicated, which will require some more calculations. And we have the neutral axis here drawn. Now when it comes to first solving the neutral axis, because it's going to be important when we utilize um, the bending stress equation, let's go ahead and name this y bar. From the bottom, y bar is this value. And of course, to finding centroids of composite areas such as this one, I'll go ahead and link the video that I previously uploaded in how to solve. So now without going too far into it, we actually end up solving for Y bar being equal to 32.5 millimeters from the bottom here. This is where the location of the neutral axis is located. Now, of course, when you do, when you try to solve for the neutral, the neutral axis or the Y bar, in this case, you sum all the Y's um, with respect to the bottom portion because that's where our reference point is to solve for y bar y1 of this rectangle here right it's 40 by 10 and half of this would be the where the center is located for this geometric shape as well as the area 2 and for this one from the bottom it's going to be 40 plus half of the 10 so it's 45 and this is what you use to go ahead and solve for the y bar divided by the sum of all those smaller areas. So now that we have y bar, we could go ahead and solve for the moment of inertia. Of course, in this case, we're going to be applying the parallel axis theorem because we're going to be solving for the moment of inertia of each of these smaller areas but of course it's going to be with respect to the neutral axis which is why we're going to be applying the parallel axis theorem so now using the parallel axis theorem in this case we go ahead and do the moment in this case is the base times height cubed divided by 12 for each individual cross-sectional area right so for one we do the we solve for the moment of inertia Plus, we use the parallel axis theorem, the cross-sectional area of that smaller area, times the distance. So in this case, the distance would be from the centroid of this small area all the way to the neutral axis. And, and since we already have y bar and we have y1, it's easy to solve this d1. And you do the same exact steps for all the other cross sections and finally you end up getting the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis being equal to 363.3 times 10 to a negative 9 meters to the fourth and this is another one that we're going to be using now for the actual equation of bending stress in this case let's go ahead and do solve for the stress at the top and we know since it's a bending the top portion is going to be in compression so for the top portion all the way here, we're going to be experiencing compression. So it's equal to the moment times C. In this case, C is going to be from this neutral axis all the way up here to the top of the beam. This is where it's going to be in compression. And of course, since we have Y bar and all the other given dimensions, pretty easy to solve for the C. And let's go ahead and plug in all these numbers. So the top of the beam will be experiencing 3.61 mega pascals now let's go ahead and solve for the bottom portion in this case we know it's in tension and the c would be from the neutral axis all the way to the bottom of the beam which we already which in this case would in fact be y bar 32.5 millimeters so let's go ahead and plug it in and we get 6.71 mega pascals at the bottom or where the beam is experiencing tension. So when it comes to these different geometric shapes, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be that the stress at the top is going to be equivalent to the stress at the bottom of the beam. So this is where we went ahead and we actually calculate and solved that the top portion or the beam is being compressed is actually less than where the beam is being in tension of 6.71 megapascals. And these are the stresses we're going to be utilizing to make sure that the material of the beam won't fail 
given the stresses it will experience it will experience with the moment and so it is in fact a little bit more steps since you have to solve for the moment of inertia as well as the neutral axis however this is something that's very important when it comes to designing beams and be able to come up with the necessary dimensions such that a beam won't fail given any moments um, the beam will experience so this is how you solve for the bending stress of a beam in bending.